to all the viewers, welcome to our live streaming and coming to you by CTT New Media and the 5G platform. And welcome to everyone to our special coverage, all need to know about Chinese New Year. And also today is a very special day. Today is the a Lenten Festival. First of all, wish all our viewers happy holiday. And also this is our live streaming and you always come to me with our CGT new media platform from Weibo and also from our Facebook and other e social media platform and that's together to celebrate this very special day and we also have our special guest here with us Mr. Lee from the China Arts Company and also Madame Liao Yinghua from I Sing Suzhou and Mr. Tian Haojiang. And today is our very special day, and the A Lantern Festival, or the A Spring Lantern Festival. That's a Chinese festival celebrated on the 15th day of the first month in the a lunar Chinese calendar. So wish everyone a happy new year and all oh, the best. So maybe gentlemen go first. So maybe let Mr. Ting go first. Or maybe Madame Lau first. Uh, wish everyone good health. And also wish everything goes well in the new year. So today is the A Spring Lantern Festival. So wish everyone a, a happy new year because this today also marks the final day of the traditional Chinese New Year celebrations. So which means after today we finish all the celebrations to welcome the new year and then start our new year work. So we always talk about actually today is very special where we talk about the A Lantern Festival actually is very special, enjoying a long history of more than 2,000 years. And of course, we need to mention about food, right? So for the eaten during the Lantern Festival, Tangyuan is a must. So this is Tangyuan and it's a glutinous rice bowl typically filled with sweet rice bean paste sesame paste or peanut butter so actually we also make it in the different colors so look at right now we have three colors this is the glutinous rice bowl we always have this to celebrate the Atlanta festival so I have a different fillings and also right now we make it in different colors as well so look at the lady right now eating the green one and we also have the white a rice bowl and also the one in black. So normally the one in black is the a filled with the sesame paste. And also for peanut butter as well. So we talk about actually tongue and <laughs> it's like the more the a sweet food. So we talk about actually the traditional wines always fit in the either it's the sweet right bean paste or sesame paste or peanut butter. So it's really sweet side of food. But right now actually people also maybe try something creative. They also fill in that with a different the a fillings so either like the a salty ones or the meat one in or the vegetables inside but actually the most popular one still the a very sweet fillings inside and also of course in the, the a northern part of china we call it a tongyuan uh, for the a southern part so the, the a tongyuan actually is for the southern part of china and also for the taiwan region and southeast asia they call it the tongyuan and for the a northern part we call it the yuanxiao but actually for tongyuan or yuanxiao 
It's kind of different due to the different menu making and filling process, but they are very similar in shape and taste. And for today's live show, uh, we welcome everyone to join us. So please stay tuned. And as you can see, we prepared a lot of the uh, different gifts. So that will be our giveaways to our lucky ones. So talk about the differences between Tongyuan and Yuanxiao. So Yuanxiao may be the larger in size. So we talk about maybe Yuan Xiao's larger size and Tongyuan's smaller size. And of course, they have a different way of cooking it. So Tongyuan from the southern part of China. So they put the a fillings inside and also use the skin to cover it. And for Yuan Xiao, actually, you shake it. So that is why you look at the skin actually for Tongyuan actually so have very smooth the uh, skins, but for Yuanxiao actually it's a look at they have the not really have that round shape. And also we talk about how we eat it, actually. Right now we also fried yuan xiao. I can tell it's very tasty, but Tang Yuan actually cannot fry it. And also yuan xiao, you cannot actually put it into the a freeze because that it may be half that the cracker on the sur the a surface. So actually, for the people, actually, no matter where you're from, uh, please enjoy either Tongyuan or Yuanxiao. And once again, you right now watching our special coverage. And we we'll talk about actually this is a day also marking the family reunion. And of course, at different places in China, they have different way to celebrate it. So in the Taizhou, so the customs to celebrate the Lantern Festival, I believe a little bit different. But first, we we'll talk about actually the 15th day but actually in Taizhou, we celebrate the Lantern Festival day before. So basically, it's the 14th day of the a new year. So we have that the a eating Tongyuan or the a dragon or lion dancing. It all happened on the 14th day. And we also eat Yuanjiao or Tongyuan. But actually, we eat another food. <laughs> you can consider it as a quite thick soup. So look at the way I put in the different veggies. So we have a bamboo shoot, mushroom, and also the a. Preserved meat. So basically, we put everything inside to make it a very thick soup. I believe this is something that maybe only you can enjoy it in Taizhou. So talk my childhood actually didn't have Tongyuan. We just had this one to celebrate the Lantern Festival. So on the night of. 14, we eat the salty one on the in the morning of the next day, that's the 15th day. So we eat the a sweet one. So basically, that means that like you're alive. Well, of course, first might some difficulties, but in the end, you overcome all these difficulties and as welcome and enjoy the good days. So basically, that means that the live circle or the live journey is first to have some salty one, but at the end, that would be very sweet. 
So that have very good meaning. And we also talk about actually this day we also enjoy that festival lanterns. In Taizhou, actually, we're quite well known in making a festival lantern. So we have a different account of the a soup. So basically, that's the a very specific for a certain location. So we're not really that eat the Tangyuan or Yuanxiao. But of course, one thing you need to do is to enjoy the lantern, and that sometimes actually we made lantern by ourselves. So that's kind of like the a merry-go-round. That's the a the a trotting horse lamp. Actually, in very early days, actually we made by ourselves. So it's a lantern adorned with a revolving circle of paper horses. So I not really have something quite to put in my memory regarding my childhood, how to celebrate the A Spring Lantern Festival because I was see overseas from a quite young age. And actually I'm very good at cooking. So I actually invite a lot of people and treat them with a very nice meal. And what about you, Mr. Tian? So as a kid, of course, we really appreciate the assessment paste, yuan xiao. So that's always popular among kids. And also we talk about different ways to make yuan xiao or tang yuan. So I was born in Beijing. So in my uh, in my childhood, I actually always can see that the people who selling uh, these yuan xiao actually you always can see them actually shaking to make the yuan xiao all the time. And also be be careful because that uh, this is really served in soup, so it's really hot. And for overseas Chinese, I actually were really looking forward to eating these the di, a yuan xiao or tang yuan because look at the shape, it's a round shape. So it's the always remit that meaning that people getting together to celebrate this day with the families. So the Chinese people believe that the round shape of the balls in which they are served symbolize family togetherness. So also I'm really glad that I can celebrate today with my mom. Actually, my mom is in a quite high age. So we also wish her good health. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Jia actually went abroad until 29 years old, uh, going to United States for advanced education. So we talk about the A Festival Air actually in Beijing was quite rich. Actually, we always have a different the literature to describe that the A for different days. Uh, before the New Year, and also during the a New Year celebration, what people should do. Actually, we have a different way to describe that, especially in the literature. 
当然，当然，在北京，你想可以。So in Beijing, actually, during the a uh, Chinese Lunar New Year, actually, the normal practice or activities for people to visit that the a fairy temple. Eating Tanghu, that's very sweet and sour. The like the a sweet tea food. So it's kind of love the a uh, tomatoes or the a uh, calabal uh, sticks, and I also talk about it today. Actually, also marks the a uh, first full moon. So we talk about actually this the eighteen Tangyuan or Yuan Xiao may bring the family harmony, happiness, and luck in the new year. And we also talk about that we enjoy the today by looking at the different kinds of the lanterns, and also of course a very important activity is that we also need to solve the riddles on the lanterns. So basically, we have uh, the questions on the paper. So let's randomly draw one from the plate. So hopefully, we can choose the a simplest one. So let's open it. So, so my question actually is are the riddles actually need to base on that ten characters to guess a one province. So we talk about that. They they see a riddle is that the a swan goose fly across the a dark cloud. So that's also guess a one province in China. So for this riddle, talk about the a swan goose already gone and the boat goes to departure. So this is just very simple one, which is four characters in Chinese, and internal peace and tranquility. Uh, 
ozone gas it plays in China. So that should be right, the a place or the name of the a places that with a Chinese character meaning peace. So this talk about that the spring water is blue, so that means uh, the city Qinghai in Tibet, because uh, they all have the share the same color blue, so that will be the hint to that riddle. So basically, look at this is the a riddle solving. So basically, look at the characters. So that do you need to find that hint either that related to that the lake or related to water or related to the a same pronunciation or that something share the same color. So this is the uh, something really special that we only do that on the a uh, lantern festival, so in the a uh, temple fair, or in the parks. Actually, that have prepared a lot of these kind of the riddles. So if you can guess one, and there is also a gift prepared for you. So basically, this is a must to celebrate the a lantern festival. So this is also a way to really train or let our kids to think deep or let them have that interest in finding out the answers because that also related to the Chinese culture. And we talk about today actually is the very first day with the full moon. And we also prepared a performance. So that's so the poetry or the a poem concert. So this is the a live streaming app, and we talk about it today. Actually, it's the biggest holiday in China, and that marking the very last day of the a Lunar New Year celebration. And so today our live streaming is also to celebrate London Festival with poem. So we we'll talk about ancient Chinese poets actually wrote countless poems praising the London Festival, and now it is still fun to read. Hey, 
This is my first time to enjoy this poem by Li Bai, it's an invitation to wine. And I also see the singers, actually they are foreign friends, but you can see actually they singing in Chinese. I believe this is a great effort. And also I believe the song actually is a really nice one. So this is actually you can see that we have a fourteen poem, and this one is called Chang Jing Jiu Invitation to Wine. So basically, this we also talk about that we give around twenty two. 
poems to the composers. So basically, one poem maybe we give assigned to two to three candidates, and we choose the best one. And we talk about invitation to one actually quite hard because of including 181 characters and talk about emotions and talk about storytellings inside. I can tell you it's really tough, really tough, tough task for the composers. So we found a composer actually cooperated already for seven years. Uh, the composer actually the, uh, was professor from Chinese Conservatory of Music, and he actually the one wrote the song for this poem, Invitation to Wine. So he has a quite a good, really good assault. So you can see actually the music not really coming in at the very first minute. So you can see actually people actually first to do that the recite at the very first time. So they recite. So that's basically the first two lines. So do you not see the Yellow River come from the sky, rushing into the sea, and never come back? So we talk about this is the very first two lines. And for our foreign friends, they at least practice 200 times, 300 times, because they need to recite these lines in Chinese. So actually, we work as a team. So for the singers, actually, especially I have the background with opera, we know actually it's really, really difficult to sing in another language. And also for our foreign singers, actually, they had zero knowledge about Chinese. So talk about the intonation. And also, they need to sing and recite the lines in Chinese, I can tell you. And also, of course, you can imagine how difficult it is. And they actually, these group of singers practice every day. And Mr. T actually practice with them every day. One letter after another, one line after another. Maybe that's invite Mr. Tian to give us a demonstration. And of course, we have to emphasize that it is a team effort. And we also invite the a top expert from the opera industry to really give us the instrument and the guidance. So we invite the a professors from the Julia School of Music from the United States, and also we invite the professors from the Chinese Conservatory of Music and also the a Shanghai Conservative of Music. Actually, you asked me to recite these lines. Of course, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, it's, it's recite the lines that when the hopes are one, drink or feel in high delight. Heavens has made us the talents we are not made in wine. A thousand gold coins spent, more will turn up again. So we talk about the ODs lines that are foreign. France singers, they need to recite and sing all these lines. So of course, we know it's very hard to learn Chinese. So for myself, in high school, I learned uh, Russian. And also, I, my major actually is in Bulgarian. So I always know that Chinese is really difficult because I have different intonation. 
So if you make that the tone, so we talk about in Chinese, we have a four pitch of a voice that that's really really difficult to pronounce in a quite accurate way, and do not need to mention about writing. And we talk about the beauty of the Chinese character actually all lies in the strolls. So we talk about the a poem also uh, not only the poem or poetry actually all coming with music or the literature or the a music score. So we talk about the lyric actually is very important. So it's a way of a creativity, but actually just that we use the a really modern Western music instruments, and also look at the lyrics or the songs. Actually, it's also quite a modern style. It's not the a ancient style. So this is an ancient poem, but actually that that it collaborate or the catalyst with the a modern lyrics. So the composer actually is a, got his a doctor degree from Tchaikovsky Music School and he was a really outstanding one in the field. We talk about that in the poetry industry or the People talk about back to the Tang Dynasty. Actually, not really speak the Mandarin. That we understand the Mandarin how it sounds today. So maybe that back then to the Tang Dynasty, maybe actually they spoke in the Cantonese or maybe the dialects in Hubei. So we also think about maybe try. I maybe have a try to maybe sing or recite a poetry in Cantonese. Maybe I believe that can add additional flavor or maybe bring restore the original look sound and feeling back to not the poetry of Tang Dynasty. So t like Cantonese is really in another language of the world to me. <laughs> so maybe that invite Masa. <laughs> so this is actually that the lady just recited the lines in Cantonese. So that's totally different taste and feelings. So either you actually recite the lines in the Mandarin or in Cantonese. It's actually songs like different songs where it's like different lyrics. So actually for those lines, of course, language, that's the beauty of language. If you speak in different language, that bring the different flavors. <laughs> so we talk about different language, actually, it's different tones. So I believe that a different language really might bring the different medalists to us. 
And we also talk about that a concert actually is undergone a very long time for preparation. And actually, you look at the singers, actually, there are four in front. So a very big task or to the everyday homework for them. They need to practice and learn Chinese every morning. So uh, for Mr. Tian or Madam, uh, say Madam President of the organization, so who came up with this idea? So this is the I Sing, that's our organization. We established for quite a long time and we held a more than dozen concerts and also staged opera, picking opera. For myself, we need to think about the something the really are the original works made by I Sing. So talk about the portrait of the Tang Dynasty. Actually, from my own perspective, that's my longing hope, because I really love poetry since I was really young, and also especially plus my experience seeing overseas. Still, right, something with me in my DNA is still the a quite deep rooted Chinese culture. And I will talk about that actually uh, for the young kids in China. We always need to uh, write the poetry in our early days. So, some of the lines actually you cannot really for, forget. And of course, we talk about the year 2020. Uh, the a uh, COVID-19, uh, the sudden onslaught of COVID-19 uh, really gave a very heavy blow to the whole world in every aspects of economy, trade, and also to our performance as well, because we canceled all the offline performance. Uh, we organized a competition inviting the composers from 18 countries, because this is come be held online. So we invite the eight composers around the world. Actually, we invite the young generations of the composers because we would like to seize their feelings about the a poetry. And actually, this lasted for seven months. So this is a online competition. So this is an I think competition. And around 8,000. Candidates and joined our competition. I will only choose 285 singers to the finals. They actually eager to learn Chinese and would like to sing the poetry in Chinese. So basically, that's how we start these performance. Of course, we will continue our endeavor. Show must go on. <laughs> so just now, our foreign singers performed the A Chang Jin Jiu. Let's see, a song for drinking or let's see, invitation to wine. So we talk about actually the very beginning line actually not really included in the poem. Actually, that's the I would like to invite you to wine and also please listen to me. And I would like to sing for you. And then that will be come to the first line, do you not see the yellow river come from the sky? So I believe actually you always know that poetry always come with the music or the lyric. So once again, you are watching our live coverage. This is a special series the, about Chinese New Year. And this is our live stream series 
brought to you by CGTN New Media, and also today is the Atlantum Festival, and this is the a last day, marks the final day of the traditional Chinese New Year celebration. And the ancient Chinese poets wrote Confluence poem, the praying, the Lantern Festival, and also would like to share some lines with our viewers. And also today is our the a final episode. So we will also show you a spectacular concert. So look at it. This is the doll. Actually, it is featured with Suzhou style, and we made this dedicated for the lucky viewers. So this is actually coming with the a bland box. Basically, you not really know what kind of doll inside the box. So depend on your luck. So we talk about the culture that always represents the soft power of the one country, and we need to really think about how we can show the a strength of the Chinese culture, or how we can better tell the story, or let more people to understand, to know, embrace our Chinese culture. So that's actually lies in the way how you communicate. With other people about Chinese culture, I believe actually the a poem of the Tang Dynasty weighs the a modern lyric or model is actually a very good way to let people buy in the Chinese culture. So another is a poems from Song. See. So we talk about that uh, the a uh, Chinese classical literature, especially the Tang and the Song poetry, actually is very important and are the shining pearls in the treasury house of Chinese literature. So we believe that we can through different ways to bring out the beauty of the poems to our global audience. And we also talk about today actually coming with the live stream is a very special and spectacular concert. So this concert basically you will enjoy the outstanding foreign singers sing the poetry from Tang and Song Dynasty. And actually, we also worked with different organizations. Invite the outstanding the singers, composers, to join our activities. So for us this time, we also invite I Sing to join our opening ceremony this year for our event. Mm. And also talk about the a composer competition online that happened last year organized by I Sing. So basically invited the a foreign composers to make lyrics for the poetry of Tang and Song Dynasty. And also, I believe that's the highlight part is that use kind of like an opera way to sing or perform a poetry by our foreign singers on the stage. So we start to think about that how we can really tell a good story about Chinese culture, how we make that story very easy understood by our foreign friends. I believe this kind of concert is really nice try. And also for that concert actually happened in Suzhou, and we invited nine foreign singers. 
to Suzhou to perform on the stage. So I believe our foreign singers actually really enjoy and understand more about the Chinese culture, and they also enjoyed the hospitality provided by people in Suzhou. Especially during the quarantine time period, and actually they enjoyed it quite a lot. And we also talk about the poetry of Chang and Song Dynasty. Actually, it's also a way to think about how we can really bring that the uh, Chinese lines translated into English. So for myself, I actually I knew their icing quite a long time ago. I just knew the icing, but I we didn't have any cooperation before. But actually, one day I received a proposal regarding their concert. So this has touched me. So we make that decision to say that we need to do this concert right away. This is a really good initiative, very creative, very fresh way. So we also had the, a documentary to basically record the whole preparation, the efforts, endeavor made by the whole team, and also we talk about we invited nine foreign singers. Actually, they need to quarantine. And actually, you know, time really counts. So actually, during the quarantine time, they use the smartphones to learn and practice Chinese language. And talk about their first show, actually, I can tell they received really what overwhelming response from the audience. Their performance actually is very popular and welcomed by the viewers, by the audience. So I believe by doing so, actually, that's also narrowed the distance between the Chinese singers or the composers and the Western counterparts. So we talk about actually the whole effect or results actually far beyond our expectation. Uh, Madame Liu actually played a key role in coordinating uh, the related parties. And also, of course, you know she's a really good sh chef. So like, it's a really treat to everyone, a good food. They're really happy. And also our foreign singers, uh, that they understand the Chinese food and also learn the Chinese language. And right now they can sing and perform on stage in Chinese to really perform the Aitan and the song poetry. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about that, that the, a feast prepared by my dam actually is, you have to try. And I can tell you actually she's a really well known cooking picking dog. Picking back. So let me speak for her. You know that from the very beginning, to clean the dock, to make it ready to cook. That's my job, you know. So that's I'm the one right now speak. So give you example. Actually, uh, we leave in New York, and we moved to New York in 1991 from Colorado. And actually, we talk about actually we ate more than 2,400 ducks. So we really counted every ducks. So we just stopped counting at 2040. 
but I can tell you actually we still actually ate more. So right now we believe the rough number is around 2,400. <laughs> and you can find more information online about how Madame Cook Peking Duck. So Long Island duck actually is similar as a, a duck for picking duck. So it actually is very the, a rich texture. And actually, I'm not really cook for one duck. Actually, for every time, I really cook two to three ducks. So from buying ducks to preparing the pre-work, actually, it's all Mr. Tian's job. So back to Chinese New Year. So talk about the every time uh, if I have the chance to perform a stage of the a Metropolitan Opera. Actually, I performed for two decades. Okay, Madame basically prepared. That's a lot of really nice food for the staffs. Because for us, we need to perform online, right? We cannot really eat picking dog before we sing, right? We need to perform. We need to always keep ourselves in a good shape so we can have the, a good performance on the stage. So we always talk about the singers. You cannot eat picking duck. So basically, the really nice food of the feast basically prepared for the staff. So the people told me that we're not really because you are a good singer. We keep you in the a metropolitan opera because uh, Madame can really cook really nice picking duck, really nice food. That's the reason we actually keep you in the team and also actually madame also can do the spring rolls dumplings so it's a whole bunch of people, right? So it's more than 100 people. That's the number of staff in the Metropolitan Opera. So basically, the madame prepared the food for the backstage staff. And also talk about during the a Chinese New Year, actually at the backstage of the Metropolitan Opera, it's more or less like the same setting here. We have that the a decoration, and I also cooked picking duck, dumplings, fried beef, pork. So prepared a lot of food for the staff. <laughs> so they also have a documentary recording that the behind the stage stories happened. So look at the, actually look at the madame basically right now is cooking the feast. And you can see actually the look at the dishes, quite international style. So we have Porsche, we have a spring roll, a homemade curry. And as we have the a mashed potato. So look at actually there are the invited foreign singers. And this is basically the documentary recording that they stay in Suzhou for the concert.
So this is a documentary that's named "The Time Together Across the Street." So the music, food. Actually, this is a really nice, amazing evening. So people can see they are very happy and enjoying that moment. So this is the very first kind of the vocal music art activities held in China. So you can see the singers actually they actually use singing the songs as the language to communicate with other. Of course, language actually cannot this kind of communication because like the lyrics, the melodies always go across the border. So this is a kind of the activities actually that's going on for many years. And you can see actually this is a large family. So the communication, the sharings actually happened over the time. So we talk about the icing sinners. We would like to do a activity called How Are You? So we talk about the our seniors from 30 countries. They quite actively, proactively pitched in saying they would like to join with us. So basically, they just had the, like the one minute message. So someone that they sing their song or the Chinese songs they learned four years ago. I can tell you it's a really touching message. We talk about people with a different language, different background, from different race. Actually, I believe that the a touching moment we talk about that, the moving. The memories actually that's very easy to be shared. So you always can see that the people's big smiling face. So I believe it's not just music to music, it's more soul to soul communication. So right now you are watching the a special coverage about Chinese New Year, and today we celebrate the Atlantic Festival with poem. And we talk about today's Lantern Festival and also marking the a final day of traditional Chinese New Year celebrations. And we talk about the ancient Chinese poets wrote countless poems praying the Lantern Festival. And also we talk about actually the a I Sing organization actually they did a great job inviting the composers to create the lyrics medleys for the tongue and the song poetry and also inviting the a foreign singers who perform on the stage in Suzhou. So this is a documentary basically recording the whole performance and it's back behind the scenes stories. So that's the concert staged in Suzhou. And this is the a right river valley as from Russia. So you can see the centers from Russia joined. And we talk about actually look at for this song actually is the six singers. They may speak or sing in different language, but actually for the same song. How amazing it is. It really is. Mm. 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 Mm.
可以用这个可以用苏州话唱平台。苏州平台。And the colleagues that are here, you know, some of them I've met before, others I've seen pictures. 天哪，那我们的音乐会上有有他的演出吗？音乐会当然有了，有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有有
应该说非常非常的这个辛苦 ，support 这个形象角色是这样。其实这个这个在这里头，我们看的纪录片里头，还有我们这个指导老师，嗯嗯，特别是这个。So in the our documentary actually also have the the a instructors included. Actually, we talk about the really picky. I believe that's their attitude toward their work. They have really high standards. 这实际上在这里头体现了。我们在这个放那个这个这个纪录片的时候，很多人都谈到。We talk about actually for the. We talk about that. So one minute on the stage takes ten year practice. So I believe that reflects the hard work paid behind the scene. Of course, this is not just one person could be the hero. It's a group. It's a teamwork. And、so our teams from China, our officials from the Chinese side, as also as our foreign centers. So with everyone pitching in, we made this spectacular show staged in Suzhou. In The actual ordinary year of year 2020, I believe that's a great milestone. <laughs> And let's look another show.
that's so great, right? Very amazing show. I believe actually that's the very first time for me to see that, and also actually also the host for the children's. Program, I believe actually you can see actually the dancers as well as the singer they have really good chemicals going on the stage, and they really joined themselves in that show. And also you can see that's the a song, that's the a song for the goose. I believe that is so fresh to me. How do you feel, Mr. Li? We talk about opera always like this is the, the a high register should be really elegant but look at this one this is so cute right and we talk about for the young generation and for the kids actually I believe this may be one of the first poem for them to learn so this is the a classic tongue poem called the a goose from the poet Luo Bin Wang. So also look at the a back, the screen at the back, that the a main visual actually is the cartoon. I believe actually for all that subtle, very sweet details, really make that show. So for the idea. For these goods, I believe there are a lot of things actually you can create for the poem. So we we'll think about that. We should let one singer to sing this, or let the young kids to perform, or we invite a group of the adult singers to perform. So we discuss with the team for many times. We believe that we may invite a six foreign female singers and also we have that the uh, keys to perform the dancing part and Holly actually the very famous the a uh, singers the very young one so actually, the, uh, we talk about actually for her performance uh, went viral online, and we talk about actually you can really like sing in a very high tone. It's quite well known the a uh, color tour. So we talk about that lu, lu, lu means goose in Chinese. So that's really really difficult for them to perform this very very simple. Song because that for the a pronunciation, if we mark it, so just the e in English. So it's like a, it's not a, it's a. So actually, this sound not really, not really exists, at least in English. So like for the singers at the very beginning, they couldn't really pronounce that sound. So you know that uh, this kind of sound they practice every day. And also talk about the a last singer. That's also the a highlight of this song. So she actually can sing a one octave. Higher than the a normal. <laughs> Color tour. So basically, you can see actually she speak and she sing in a very high tones and also look at the movement. So cute and really easy. And because we invite kids to the show, you know actually that very good interaction between the singers and the audience because the kids in the, the audience seats actually they really like to join us and also learn that move and we talk about that I also ask a group of 500 children to say whether you know the poem called good yes so that 500 children can actually Recite that poem. So this is called a good, good, good. 
Next, she is ascending towards the sky with the beautiful night panning in such lovely curve. I believe that when you see a group of 500 children actually that's recite, <laughs> recited this poem to you, it's a really touching. So that's why that made me decide to bring this poem on the stage. So you can see this is something the highlight or the fun part of the concert. Speaking of the a Lantern Festival and also the poem, actually, they always go along with each other. So we talk about one, the A is very important, the A poem by Xin Qiji. So that's the one line very that famous is uh, when O oh, at once I turn my head, I find her there where lantern light is dimly shined. So talk about a poem, actually, there are a lot of really the house known famous lines. And another one, that's the A Shengzha Zi Yuan Xi by the A Ouyang Xu. So that's last year at the Lantern Festival, the flower market lights were bright as daytime when the moon mounted to the top of the villas. Two lovers came to the traced just after twilight. This year at the Lantern Festival, both the moon and the lights are the same as last year, only the lovers of the A yesterday year is nowhere to be found, and tears drench the sleeves of his spring gown. So it's a sad song, but actually there are a lot of quite this kind of famous the a poem from Song and Tang Dynasty. So there are a lot of the a poem talk about the love stories, and also the a full moon stories. So there are a lot of the lines to describe the beauty of the moon, because that's the a very first full moon in the new year. So we also talk about a full moon that also symbolizes the family reunion. So that's always bring the quite touching stories. And we also talk about that the a lights or the lantern plus moon that's bring the additional romantic feelings to the whole atmosphere. We talk about the beauty of the poem. We talk about the whole feelings, the whole environment described in the language in the poem where the rhythm actually brought by the poem. I believe that a lot of things actually can be conveyed by your concert. And plus, you make it that internationalized. I believe that may be additional meaning or the rhythm, the beauty, the melody uh, you gave to O.D.'s poem. So that concert actually is not just a concert. Actually, I believe that will have a quite deep memory left to the audience, to our foreign singers, or to Mr. Lee, these kind of the, uh, our partners to make this show happen, to make it done and do done in a good way. I believe for our foreign friends, they will for sure remember some of the very beautiful lines or the a poetry. So we talk about that the Qiangqing Jiu, that's a really the a muscular or the a quite strong failing invitation to wine or not this goose, 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 this very kind of the a quite cute poetry because that's the very first poem learned by the young children. 
I believe there's something quite different. So basically, you provided a quite a big fist of Tang poetry. And of course, right now, this time for the concert, actually, majority of the songs actually for the Tang poetry. I believe maybe coming up, we can have a different series, right? Next, maybe next time, we can have a song poetry because Tang and the song poetry are the assets where we talk about the RDA pearls in our treasury house of the Chinese culture. So right now, let's say, when we put an end to the pandemic, we will have more shows going on, performed in different cities and different places. Maybe we can have a tour, touring performance, not only in China, but also maybe overseas. Of course, there are abundant <coughs> assets in the Chinese culture. So I believe there are a lot that we can bring to the stage. And talk about a special coverage, and this is the a live stream series about Chinese New Year actually explored in the past 10 days to the 10 different cities in China to showcase the rich diversity of Chinese culture during the Chinese Lunar New Year holiday. So we invited our foreign friends, visit the 10 different cities to experience how a, a different custom in different cities and help people in different places celebrate Chinese New Year in different styles. I believe this is kind of the a new style, the a training style for this year to celebrate a new year. This is the a online reunion celebration. So we talk about that. This is also organized and initiated by the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. So we work with the embassies and also with the localities to organize this large scale cultural activities. So we'd like to celebrate the Chinese New Year with the, our Chinese friends, the a China, overseas Chinese as far as our foreign friends. Because right now you can see a lot of things actually can be happened online. We also would like to bring more activities to celebrate the Chinese Lunar New Year with our foreign friends online. So actually every year we actually had the activities in 200 cities around the world. More than 1,000 performance staged every year during the Lunar New Year. So also you can see that right now see, uh, some countries actually also make the uh, Chinese Lunar New Year as their bank holiday. And also you can see actually for the uh, other countries, actually they also celebrate the uh, Chinese New Year. At least the people, foreign people or foreign friends know Chinese Lunar New Year. And when they see Chinese people, they always not wish them a happy Chinese New Year. I believe this is very important. So we talk about the Eiffel Tower, also turned to riot colors, and the Empire State Building in the United States. And same in Japan, actually, they all make it in the color ride to celebrate the Chinese New Year. And also the a high quality performance actually so be staged overseas to celebrate the Chinese New Year. So we have to mention that because we made the show happen, a lot of our staff actually in the past at least one decade, they have not celebrated the Chinese New Year with their family. So they feel sorry to 
their family because they have the elderly to take care and those who have the very little ones at home. But we talk about that the, our diplomatic officers overseas, some of them actually usually take their holidays or annual leave and coming back to China to celebrate the New Year with their family. But because of these DA shows, and they actually give up their holidays to make the shows perform on the overseas stage. And their hard work right now paid back. We talk about Chinese New Year is one of the most important holiday among the Chinese, no matter where you are. So people always would like to go back to the home to celebrate with their family members. Because of the COVID-19 this year, we ask or the Ecolon people to stay put to celebrate a new year. And we talk about that in order to bring the Chinese culture and introduce them to overseas audience. And actually, people paid, devoted themselves in promoting Chinese culture overseas. So they did a lot of work. So we talk about this is the a culture means that soft strands of a country. So we talk about that the beauty of the Chinese culture that can be better understood by our foreign friends. So we believe that right now you can see at least our hard work paid back. And also this year, CGTN used 10 days, our special coverage, to show actually the a diversity of the Chinese culture during the Chinese Lunar New Year holidays to show our global audience how Chinese people celebrated the New Year. So this is part of the Chinese culture. I also would like to invite our global audience to get more knowledge about the a Chinese custom, Chinese culture, and also bring the Chinese culture closer to our foreign friends. So we look at that the a concert actually is a very successful one, and also I believe that we have a quite good friends, right? And I believe actually the our foreign singers had a quite good memory and experience. Okay,可以。为什么他们其实最重要你也想想,他们都是为了这个IC。黄鹤楼,B-Rainy,艺术家其实都很脆弱。玻璃一样。我说你至少有三次要跳楼了<笑> Okay. 
请进来，进来，进来。哎呀，简直是不可思议！不着急，这个货。再晚一点，我们就要出事了。啊！值得，这个是他要的。你看，里面多漂亮，漂亮。设计师，他是个日本人，他把他妈妈的荷包剪了，<笑>这个，所以他就只能穿这个上台。群的话，改变了很多事情，特别是人的这种对于艺术的看法。Every morning, I'm in the midst of you on the lake. Thank you, Catherine. The singing is not the job, mm. it's your whole life that suddenly stop. You think that life is become empty.
So the concert and the documentary actually reinforce each other. And plus, actually, we have that honor to invite our three guests to talk about more stories happened on the stage and behind the scene. I believe that provides a whole round of the views to let our audience know more about that concert. So this is a very special one, a very spectacular one. I also invite our viewers, if you have a chance, please do watch that concert and also the documentary because that's really a very fresh, creative way to bring the a ton of poetry with the modern lyric and medley performed by our foreign singers and Chinese singers. So I believe this is a really great show and a very special one. A lot of highlights included. And for Masa, I saw you cried hard, right? Share with us your thoughts on how did you feel. Actually, I saw their rehearsal. So it's the rehearsal with the orchestra. I can tell you, actually, the tears, I cannot really help myself stop start crying. Actually, I really, you make me cry. I can tell you this is really mission impossible. So it's a mixed feeling, actually. I can, I could share with that. It's actually impossible that when you saw all the singers, like they had that rehearsal with the orchestra, and finally we had our D Day. Actually, you talk about that there are a lot of uncertainty and instability because of COVID 19, because of the different factors. We talk about finally we make the show happen, we bring that to the stage, and everyone's so cooperative, they so devoted themselves. And not just a show, it's not just a concert. It's a really happy journey. Right now, I can share with you that it's still, when I look back, actually, with everyone pitching and they make their own job well, actually, didn't have any selfish part, they didn't give up. Everyone just like go together hand in hand moving forward. Everyone is irreplaceable. And even hotel staff are really helpful. What about Mr. Tin? Um, <laughs> your show must first touch yourself, right? So I believe for our audience, actually, the very first time they watched that documentary. So we talk about that. The uh, friends, first of all, I say hello to all our foreign friends. Happy Chinese Lantern Festival. Of course, a lot of people would like to see the concert. And I do invite you to watch our documentary because there are a lot of things included in that documentary. Actually, we play the documentary twice before. The so documentary total was for around the two hours. And we invite people from uh, the uh, 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 Grand National Theater and also the uh, people from different sectors, uh, finance, economy, cultural tourism. So first of all, they told me it's that really touching stories. You talk about the project, you talk about everyone. Actually, there are a lot of people involved. And also they talk about they can feel that good faith conveyed from that documentary. So the director for the documentary, Ms. 
is uh, Meng Dunfeng, and uh, also the cameraman, the editors. To look at all these pictures, footage, you could not see that the a pictures that the a camera team, the shooting team, they sat down and eat. We didn't know when was the time they actually to rest. And you look at actually, this is in Suzhou, you can see the people enjoying the tongue. And actually, this is something actually we celebrate at London Festival. And I believe this is just right in time. So we talk about the camera, t camera team, the shooting team. Actually, they always capture different moments, different pictures, different stories. Of our show, of our concert, and also the practice, the rehearsal. And they didn't actually rest. So I believe actually the camera team, the shooting team, demonstrate the whole spirit and effort, the attitude among the whole team. You look at the a performance, the singers, the whole like staff teams. This is not a one-man show. This is a team work, right? Actually, this has happened in a really hard time. But the good thing is, like, because everyone's dedication, we overcame that hardship. And right now, for us, we need to think about going forward what we can do. We talk about the a tongue, so uh, even Yuan dances a poetry and how we can bring all these on the stage. We talk about the a Western opera, Western music, still Western op, the a orchestra, right? How we can bring the Eastern as a Western corporate together to convey the message with the beauty of the Chinese culture, right? If we believe in ourselves, this is the right thing to do, then let's do it. We will never stop our efforts, our endeavor, and also, of course, show must go on. So you can see that everyone is so focused on their work. So that every 100% concentrate on our work, and you can see we have a really good discussion or even argument, but that's the argument for good. Right, and also is that to think about the a significance or why we did this concert and how we can do more this kind of concert. Right. Mm. I believe that we will receive your audience, your comments, uh, maybe your wishes. Mm. To us, I believe that will be also our courage to move forward. And also, you are the host mm. for the A Children's Program and like the our Goose 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 poetry. And it will be from your background. From your experience, uh, maybe you also can give us a very good insight. So we talk about the Chinese language is so beautiful because a lot of time actually we could better understand how beauty it is from a ton of poetry. And for the generation of generation of Chinese people actually we learn ton of poetry from very, very young age. And that we talk about like this is so classic literature. And maybe that this time is good, good, good. That may be for the eight kids, right, the three years old, because this is something they actually on their reading list. Uh, maybe for different age group, maybe you can prepare different kinds of tom poetry. So I believe that's kind of the way to uh, uh, bring the additional interest. 
to them because like this is not something boring things actually if you bring that music you bring a lyric to them because interest always guide people you always always motivate the people to do self-learning they eager to explore more right because they're interested in it and a young composer called Li Kai Chou, actually, he wrote a lot of quite a popular song for the kids. And also for his kids, he worked for his kids, actually, in a study at elementary school, and it also had a rating list of the a ton of poetry. So for the other kids, actually, that the other kids actually just remembered literally the word by word. But for his kids, because his father is a composer, and his father actually used a lyric to help his kids to remember all the lines. So for his kids, actually, his kids really sing all these poetry. I believe it's actually your work of great significance. So we're not just really for the sake of memorizing all these lines. The good thing is like we really maybe use different ways, they maybe play different music instruments to convey the meaning, the beauty of tone poetry. So maybe that you have a specific age group concert, maybe like today's concert for that a children age like three to five, then we can prepare that to their reading list that created the a lyric and then we can have that dedicated concert for these group of teens. Or maybe next time we can have the concert for the kids from age like 6 to 12 or 6 to 9. I believe this is a great cause that benefits thousands, millions of kids. And for Mr. Lee, you involved from day one. So share with us your feelings, maybe. So we talk about actually a lot of really touching moments happened. So we talk about the Mr. Tan and Masa, and the whole team, our foreign singers, and also the staff teams. Actually, you could find these people in the documentary. Another thing is appreciation. First, it thanks to the government. We talk about that, that it's not easy to invite the a foreign friends to come to China. So we first thank the a Ministry of Culture and Tourism and also Suzhou government. And also, the two guests, as well as the foreign singers, they made a great contribution and also the great support given by the government and authorities. And also for this concert, we will actually have that touring. So we will go on tour, right? So we talk about that. We make the show a theory, right? We not only focus on Tang Dynasty, so there are a lot of things actually we can explore in the vast ocean of Chinese culture. So we talk about this is a treasure house. I believe there are a lot of things waiting for us to hunt and also bring the treasure, bring the beauty of Chinese culture to all the audience, home and abroad. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Salute to all. And also that does for today's live show, live stream. Thank you for all our audience. Stay tuned with CGT New Media for the past 10 days. And also, if you would like to see our show, you always can right, download our app or search CGTN at your different social media platform.
天呢，在两个小时的直播当中，走进我们直播间的网友朋友。So this is the ACTN's live stream series、oh, about the Chinese New Year in the past ten days. Actually, from February 16 to 26, we explored 10 different cities in China to showcase the rich diversity of Chinese culture during the Chinese Lunar New Year holiday. And today is Lantern Festival, marking the final day of the traditional Chinese New Year celebrations. And you know what? In the A ancient days, actually, the A Lantern Festival or the Lantern Festival Day, also the A Chinese Valentine Day. So there are also a lot of love stories happen. So today is also another romantic day because we also celebrate and also had the very first full moon day. And also, of course, we also show you the very touching story and the great spectacular show. That's a concert. The stage in Suzhou last year. So basically, that's the eight tongue poetry. Played by the a orchestra and also with our the a foreign singers, so that make the whole show that the a very attractive and amazing. <laughs> <coughs> so, any message to our viewers? So, to all our viewers, wish you in a, a new year all the best. Good luck. And for Masa, I、uh, wish my friends, if you are right now watching the show, please see the show every day. We are CGT New Media. Please stay tuned. So please, please always stay tuned with CGT New Media, and you can also watch our shows, our live streams. Different social media platform. And from Mr. Tian, so I hope that we can see all the audience same time next year. Okay, and CTN Media, please, please stay tuned with CTN New Media, and we will also celebrate next year's Chinese New Year with all our audience. So we talk about in the past ten days, our whole crews work really hard. So in the past ten days, actually we toured different cities in different ten cities. Actually, we showcase the a different customs to celebrate Chinese New Year. It's not an easy job. So big thank you to the whole crew and whole the whole team. <laughs> So maybe let's end the show with the song. This is a household well-known song called "Unforgettable Tonight." <laughs> Well, the panda one. 没有没有，不，您我跟你唱您，那我只能跟你唱了。啊，您您唱您最熟悉的。哇，你们看着我，我太紧张了。您唱一个您熟悉的。You like to？ 咱们唱一个什么唱的民歌啊？嗯。来，啊 ，Sing together。流流的山上，一朵流流的云游，短短流流的招待。山顶溜溜的朋友，月亮弯弯。山顶溜溜的朋友，月亮弯弯。山顶溜溜的。
With this song, there's a very love song, and that's also and our special coverage about the Chinese New Year. So we wish all our friends, no matter where you are, stay safe, enjoy nice food, enjoy the good views around yourself. Please take care of yourself and your loved ones. And once again. Happy New Year to everyone. See you next year. And I wish you all the best and also prosperous. Thank you.